fast, fatal heart impact Past painful scars, in fact I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions, fact don't ask, grab reactions Jacked attack with every word, then act with class As they hear me snap, I got nothing to lose Cause I fought and felt the bruise Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce I ain't lost, I'm finally loose Pick a new silver excuse, I need the views to boost me Through a new abuse of being used Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace Now you're dead to me, so peace out Remember you're discreet now, get ready for defeat Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here, and now, whenever we last left off with this series, we had Deku and the users of One for All. Now, Nana Shimura, she finally decided to reveal that they are there. She revealed to Deku in their first meeting that one for all has many quirks stored inside of it. The other users, they're on the fence about giving Deku their power because of the way he was in the past. They know for a fact that he's trying to change. But right now, Deku, he's in the middle of that. And they think that throwing in these powers, they will affect it. So not, they're not sure if it will be negative or positive. And the fact is, they kind of can't really hold back Deku with that power. Deku showed off Nana's power before. In fact, he showed it off in little bits sometimes. And he just never knew. Nana, she was aware. And then there's the fact that Black Whip, she believes that that quirk may have already creeped into Deku's daily life. And he may not have even realized it. They're not exactly too sure how Deku's been using these powers, but it seems like they can't stop him from learning more about them. Fact is, if they try to hold Deku back, there's something inside of him that's fighting against them. It's trying to consume and just get that power for itself. It's hungry for it. They're basically at a war with Deku's body. And it's easier just to try to give in because of the risk tearing apart Deku's body. Now, with that being said, Deku also talked to Bakugo, and she wanted to get more training in. Deku, he was excited with his idea. If she gets stronger and learns how to use the loan, then the girls might be able to do so as well. Thinking about what it could do with their quirks on top of it, and the two started to celebrate a little bit. Deku, kissing Bakugo as she did go to leave his apartment. She was still thinking about that, but she just tried to disregard it, since she knows exactly how Deku does act, and she herself isn't really the best judge of these emotions. Now, with that being said, we do actually have about, let's just say, a week later. Bakugo and Deku, neither one of them have really talked about it before, talked about it. She is still just trying to put it in the past, and Deku, he doesn't really know if it was a good idea or not. The two have trained, and they've avoided that topic. Bakugo, she usually does train with Deku, and at least sit around to have a drink of water or two. Then, whenever it does actually come to trying to hang out or just talk afterwards, she just leaves. They train for hours on end a day. And then, that's it. Deku does still think that it might have been his fault. Did he do something wrong? Was that not the right call? He doesn't really know. And right now, everybody, they're just standing around and looking at each other's hero uniforms. A lot of them, they have updated versions of their outfits. Larger, sleeker, and somewhat modified a bit. Basically, think of it like this. Bakugo's hero outfit, because of the technology and advancements that would happen in four years, compared to canon, her gauntlets would actually be a little bit smaller, and even possibly more compact, and pack a bit more of a blast. Basically, everyone is stronger, and their tech is improved. Those who do have it. Now, we do actually have Deku. When he came walking out, a lot of people were looking at him as the outfit he was wearing was kind of strange. 
you had people wearing suits of armor, people wearing basic clothing, like Denki and Jiro. And then you had people wearing hero uniforms like Momo. And then you do actually have Deku, who does stand out with somebody else. You have Ojiro, who he is actually wearing his martial arts uniform. And then you do actually have Deku. He does have a black gi. And a lot of people are staring at him. What he's wearing, it's strange. It's like a giant outfit. Or really a giant, well, blanket, kind of. His entire ar- hands and arms are covered. And then there's the fact that this sheet, it basically does run down past Deku's legs. You can see his feet, but that's really about it. In comparison, it looks a lot like Odro's costume. And many people, they're kind of confused. Deku, he's wearing just a really baggy, large shirt. That's what everyone is thinking. As we do actually have Deku. Whenever Ojiro does walk over and try to talk to him, Deku, him, and this guy have spoken before. And the guy, Deku, he doesn't really know too much about. All he knows is his quirk and the fact that he does train intensely to try and improve it. Deku, he's hurt talking about sparring with this guy, but the fact is he's trying to train Bakugo and himself. Along with actually learning more about the users in the past as we do have where Deku they're all standing there and right now All Might he is calling names and teams explaining to them the heroes versus villains as we do have Deku he is put on a team and the person he is put on a team with is let's just say of all the girls, Karashima. Now, Deku and Karashima, they are actually supposed to be the villains in the scenario. And you do then have the heroes. As, basically, Mineta and Kendo are both on a team. And Deku, he actually does turn to look towards Kendo. As she actually has got to shift her gaze away from him, and look over to Moneta, as the guy, he's just around her height. And she does get a turn asking if he's going to be able to keep up. Now, Moneta, since he's taller, has a better version of his own quirk, and isn't really like the regular Moneta from canon, his hero outfit actually does change as well. I do want to say that... He does have an outfit more like, hmm, I'd say John Constantine, where his outfit's more like a jacket, or really just something else like that. However, it wouldn't be that weird diaper back thing, or whatever he's wearing. Now, with that being said, Deku and Kirishima, they do head upstairs, as on the way, they do actually talk. Deku asking if... They're all doing good on their training. Yeah, we are. It's just frustrating. Really? What are you guys having trouble with? Um, well... Nah, I don't know, really. Kendo's the one who should be talking to you, because she just doesn't know what to do. Hmm, I see. But can you at least describe it to me? Now. Kirishima should just try to talk about what Ken has been doing. And the flaws, see things that she does see with it. And Deku, as the two are staying there, and All Might has said go, he is trying to explain it. Oh, these are the flaws she's having there. This is what's wrong, and she shouldn't be doing that. And Kirishima should at least try to keep that noted down. As we do have where Manetta, he actually does make it upstairs. And in a way that nobody really did expect. Deku, while he was guarding the bomb, he did hear something strange. Him actually going to throw his head as he does look towards the window. 
Deku using one for all and activating it at 5%. As he does, basically just blitz over and go to smash straight through the window. As the moment he does, he actually just reach out and go to grab Mineta by the neck. As he does go to pull him inside and go to throw him across the room. Now, you do have Karishima. She got on guard when she did see that. And she actually got to start hardening her arms as the elevator did open. And you do actually have, then have where she has turned to look towards Kendo. As Kendo, she actually does start to enlarge her hands and walk out. Karishima getting ready to go on the defensive. Now, All Might was not expecting this. While their attack, it was sort of easy to figure out. It was also not really too well coordinated. It seems like the guy, Mineta, he had a strategy. He was going to try to sneak up on them. And because Deku caught him, their ambush tactic didn't really work out too well. Now, back with Mineta. Mineta, after being pulled into the room, he does actually slam into a pillar on the wall. As his body does stick to it, one side, as the rest of it does go flying past the pillar and actually start turning into goo. As Deku, he does pause for a second before just watching as the goo does somewhat sling backwards and going to throw itself out forwards. It sticking off of the wall and ground as it does fly towards Deku. Deku going to bring his hands up to try to smack the goo away. Deku clapping his hands and creating a shockwave that does actually cut through the goo. The moment it does, you do actually have where one, well, one side of the goo does smash against another pillar on the wall, and then one side does actually hit the wall. This being where it does bounce offwards and try to actually grab onto Deku. Deku going to jump backwards as the two sides of goo, they do meet together and reform into Mineta. Him actually going to somewhat bend himself upwards as he was going to crack his back. Ah, man. That actually hurt. Interesting. So that's your quirk? Oh, yeah. I can do a lot with my quirk. But why are you wearing that sheet? There's a reason for this. Deku actually at least going to hold his hands up. As they're still covered by some lengths of sheet. And Mineta, he's trying to figure it all out. Okay. So this guy's basically fighting him in pajamas. He'll just go ahead and take this guy out, and then touch the bomb. Him just thinking, it would be so easy right now. But he wants to try to prove himself. Show off that he is strong. Then maybe people will at least recognize him. That being what he does think. As he does rush towards Deku. And Deku, he actually does go to jump backwards at 10%. As Mineta, he is basically flying out and towards Deku like the Sledger one. And this actually is surprising Deku. As he does try to throw out one of his fists and punch into Mineta, trying to send him flying or split him up. However, it turns out, physical damage against Mineta's body, it's very hard to keep up. The guy can just turn the goo and reform himself. And from what Deku is encountering, he actually is a very difficult opponent. A noble, or at least comrade, Deku would call him. As Mena, he's actually able to create blades, and whenever Deku, he actually does get touched by Mena's slime, he does find that it's slightly acidic. And this is where Deku, he does find a flaw. As after Mena, he does wrap himself around Deku, he actually is forced to throw his arms up and have the sheet go flying. As Deku, he can no longer try to use that simple tactic. As everyone there actually able to see Deku, Deku, he looks a lot more serious. As he's staying there with both of his hands up, in the stance of a fighter, and he does at least have combat boots with, well, combat shorts. Or not shorts, combat pants. Now, everyone can see it. They're kind of hard to miss. He's got armored knee pads. And then there's, well, the fact that he actually does have a string on his pants. 
it seems sort of strange. However, there actually is whenever Deku does rush in and actually go to throw a hammer kick directly down towards Mineta. And Mineta, yeah. After Deku basically does shatter the ground and cause a giant hole, Mineta tries to get away from that, trying to take this chance to go for the bomb as Deku he does go to bring his hands out, using 15% and going to smash his fist outwards as he does just blow wind and cause Mineta to fly back towards the wall and fall down the hole, which the two of them they did create. Now, we actually do have Karashima and Kendo. The two of them, whenever Kendo did walk out of the elevator, she knew exactly what to do. Karashima, she went to go armor up her body, as she was actually very close to that unbreakable mode that she does have, or Karashima does have, around the overhaul arc. Now, with that, this actually is very surprising to Kendo. As whenever she has going to throw out her fist and try to smash it into Kirishima, Kirishima she barely goes sliding back, as she does at least have her feet digging into the ground, and she is trying to stay a wall. Now, Kendo she actually does going to bring back her fist, as she does throw a fury of punches, as Kirishima she actually does take these things on. Now, Kirishima, she, whenever Kendo is going to back herself up and going to throw herself out forwards, she actually does go to bring herself forwards. Her going low to the ground as she is going to slide directly under one of Kendo's giant arms, being able to throw her fist upwards and up into Kendo's gut. As whenever she does, so she actually does keep her going up before just sending her flying backwards towards the elevator. Now, this is actually very surprising. As whenever that does happen, Kendo, she does get sent flying backwards and smashing into the metal room. As Kirishima, she does go rushing forwards and just trying to do it. She tries to activate the loan. And this ability, it is actually going to hurt and drain her for a second. She needs to be able to make sure she can do this. As whenever she does rush into the elevator, Kendo, she had the exact same idea. As we actually do have where the two of them they do get sent flying out of the building and smashing through the metal and concrete wall. All Might was kind of impressed as the two fell five stories, smashed into many things, Karashima onto an emergency escape and kind of went to a trash can or a dumpster. This was where Karashima should get up and she actually was able to stand up on her feet and try to look towards Kendo. As Kendo, she had to get back up as well. Her actually having to roll off of the dumpster and going to bring up one of her hands. As she has to go stepping forwards at incredible speed. Now, the moment this actually has happened, she has going to throw a large pile of trash directly at Kirishima. Her actually going to unharden and go to back away. As she does try to avoid this attack, as she has to get moved into a spot where Kendo she was actually able to throw out her fist. She threw it out small, but then increased the size of it, as all that mass traveling in an instant, along with the speed she threw the punch at, she actually sent Kendo flying across the street. And we do actually have back over with Deku and Mineta. The two of them, they're currently playing a simple game. Mineta, he's trying to attack Deku, trying to find a way to restrain him. However, Deku, he's not playing easy. Deku, he's running through the hallways and just trying to make sure to block off ways Mineta he can get back up. As he is staying in a room and he's basically knocked down a lot of walls. As he is holding up his hands and getting ready. Deku, he does know that activating the removal here would help. However, he needs to try to learn more about one for all. If he can unlock those quirks by just simply using this power. It's worth a shot. Plus, if he does try to get away from that Kirei thing in his head, maybe it can calm him down some. Maybe it can help him regain control of his bloodlust. And as Deku, he is thinking about that, we do have Runeta, he actually has come up from the floor and down from the ceiling. 
as Deku, he actually is Copper Manetta, who does actually reform his body, at least the top half, and going to put him into a hold, bringing a blade to Deku's throat, informing him that he caught him. And Deku, he does just stand there. As Manetta, he actually is just waiting. He's waiting for Deku to say, I give, or to just simply stop fighting. As Manetta, he'd actually start to reform over his body, informing Deku that his quirk is made for capturing people. And, fact is, he's pretty lucky that he's at least just trying to capture him. No way could he take him on in an actual fight. Plus, the guy's holding back, because he doesn't want to destroy the building. Right now, he does have the advantage. And Deku, he does go to do one simple thing. He actually does go to harden his body, and flex his back as he does do so at 25%. As the shockwave caused, it actually does shake the room as Manetta, he is thrown backwards and splattered against the wall. As Deku, he actually starts to just try to flex and move his body in ways that would cause Manetta to just fly off of him. And he's actually able to do so. As by the time Deku does have Manetta at least most of the way off of him, All Might would call the match. And Manetta, yeah. The guy he does reform slowly. And after at least reforming his entire body, he is just sitting there on the ground, rubbing his head, talking about how it sucks that he lost. And Deku, he actually stepped forward, is going to give him a hand, telling him that that was a pretty good try. As we do have over with the girls. Both of them, yeah. All Might kind of called the match early. And that was because these two... They kind of hurt each other pretty badly. And right now, Recovery Girl, she was sent to deal with these two teenagers. Or really, adults acting like children. Now, that being said, Deku, after that is all over... He does think about it. They went back to class and just went on with the day. And then there's what happened with Kendo and Karashima. From what many of those students say and from what Deku has tried to talk to All Might about from the footage, it does seem like these two, they hate each other. Since they kind of broke a few ribs and... Kendo got her arm broken, while Karishima got a skull fracture. That did kind of concern Deku, because from what he heard from Odro and even some other classmates, these two seem to have a personal fight with each other, or really just personal reasons to hate each other, as someone did say. And this did kind of concern Deku. He knows that the two, they do train and have a rivalry, but to go that intensely, it's almost at a curate level for what they would consider a match. And Deku, yeah, he does wonder if they'll be okay, since they're just recovering in Recovery Girl's office, and then after the day is over, they should be fine. Just head home and get some rest. As we do have for the day does end, and everybody, they're either parting ways, talking to each other, or hanging out. And you do actually have where the girls, they all are standing up together and going to leave. All of them in a group, as they did leave, and Deku and Bakyo, they were left in the room. As Deku, when we did stand up, he did turn to Bakyo, asking her if they're going to train today, as they did do hero training. And Bakyo, she does just talk about how, yeah, that'd be fine. The two of them leaving, as they do go the opposite way. And Deku, as they're making their way to the car, they do get there. When the girls, they did get out front, they did go to see that the limousine, it pulled up. And, well, there's no sign of Bakugo. This was kind of surprising. And then there actually was over a car did pull up on the other side of the limousine. As... Mamoshida is going to roll down the window and look to see Bakugo and Deku. As she does ask what they're doing. Hmm? Oh, we're going to go training. 
Did anyone want to join us? Um, well, um, that, that's just the thing. It's, um, this being where Momo, she does try to come up with an answer in her head. Yes, she does want to try training with him, but she's still trying to come to terms with a lot of things from her father. And really, she does want to improve herself. She does feel crappy for technically hiring Deku through a fight, but at the same time, he got what he wanted. But she does still have a little bit of lingering fear about Deku. The way he just snapped at those matches. The way he just acted, and the way he just tried to portray himself now. He tries to pretend like nothing happened. But they all saw it. No one said a word about it. Momo was just talking about how she'll pass. As so does Mina. Kendo and Kirishima, they do pass as well. As Deku and... Well, Deku and Bakugo, they do drive off. And there actually is where all of them are sitting there. Kirishima asking if anyone's noticed Bakugo acting strange recently. Because that might just be it. What are you talking about? Well, the way she acts around him. She's not usually herself. Does anyone else feel that? All the girls looking back at each other. As they do kind of piece it together for a second. Okay. This is all bad. As they are trying to figure it all out. Momo, yeah, she kind of does, well, she kind of does owe Deku. He saved her life once. Then she got him, well, he got her in the UA. And then he gave her a way to get stronger. Granted, it's dangerous, but it's something. And then there's Mina and the other girls. They do technically owe a lot of their strength to Deku. However, their gains are technically their own. Deku just helped speed up the process. And while many of them, in a way, they do owe Deku or just think of him as a teacher or a mentor, all of them, they are well aware that some of them, they're kind of pushing that level or that limit. Wondering, as Mina, she does look towards Kirishima and Kendo. She knows what those two have done already, and she's wondering if Bakugo, she might be in the same boat. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. Have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.